guys what's up welcome or welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different uh, it's gonna be more of a chatty life update no makeup related I mean it is related to makeup it is related to my channel and beauty but I'm not going to be actually playing or doing anything with makeup is what I mean so I just want to update you on some situations that have been going on in my life via my health and my skin and why I have been doing makeup less lately, like applying actual makeup. So if I start moving, it's because like talking about this, it kind of messes with my anxiety a little. So like if I start moving and, and wiggling, that's why I get really anxious. You know that I apply makeup on a regular basis for you guys here on YouTube and I love doing it. However, I did have to take a break for my dermatologist asking me um, just to kind of give my skin a break because of everything I'm going through right now. I will be back to doing more makeup videos soon. I'm just trying to let my skin heal and kind of get over this hump that it's that's happening right now. So they just recommended that I just not wash my face excessively and apply things to my face excessively so that kind of cut out makeup. So I, there will be makeup tutorials and all that fun stuff coming back, but I wanted to kind of do something a little bit different and update you guys on what's going on. First things first, um, if you're not new, you know that I have eczema. I have struggled with eczema probably my whole life really, um, or as long as I can remember. So at least since I was a child, I would get it on like the back of my knees and underneath my butt cheeks and like here on my arms. And it was pretty intense. And I would get it like up here around my mouth. And I used to just think I had chapped lips. Um, and I really never went to a dermatologist as a child. It's just kind of what I was told I had. And my mom just kind of like home remedied it with like oatmeal and you know, lotions, Aveeno, whatever. So as I got older, I kind of started to slow down and it would migrate. So obviously, you know what migrating is. If you don't, it just means that it moves all over my body. It would migrate and like last year or the year before, I had it on my hands really bad. My hands were like cracked and bleeding. If I have photos of like anything I'm referencing or talking to, I will post them somewhere above my face or over my face, something so you guys can see it. But I don't really take a lot of photos because I'm very insecure about these things that I am talking to you about. So just bear with me. So as I got a little bit older, it lessened and it migrated. So I get it on my forearms. Well, last year, I don't know if like the whole situation with, you know, the panini that happened, being isolated, teleworking, no longer like just my whole life just kind of shut down um, like everyone else's. And I went through a lot of stress. I will tell you my mental health was severely affected, good and bad. So if you wanna kind of update on that, I can go ahead and get you guys a chatty video about that, like the good and the bad mental things that happened during 2019, 2020. It was really more 2020 than it was 2019, but. So anyways, so I started getting like what looked like a red rash right here on my neck. Um, it started very small and it progressively got worse. And I was like, oh, I just have eczema here. And then my eyelids, I started getting it on my eyelids really bad. And I started getting it around my mouth really bad. And it wasn't so bad to where I was like, oh, you know, I have to go see someone. And like, I, if you don't know me personally, I avoid doctors like the plague. I don't know why we have all of this medication and doctors with all this education. And I'm just like, nah, I got it. I got it. Home remedies, I got it. Well, it got to a point where it was almost completely surrounding my neck and I don't really have severe photos of it because like I said, I have a lot of insecurities on it, but I do have photos of it healing. So I will post some of them in the beginning healing stages for you guys to see, but it started to almost make a ring around my neck. My ears were cracked and they were bleeding and pussing. Like this is, it's gonna get trigger, okay? There's grossness we're talking about here. So if you're sensitive to that stuff, click off of this video but it would get really bad and sore and I couldn't sleep because it was inflamed. And eczema is basically, they now classify it as an autoimmune disorder. And so basically my body just like, you know, thinks eh, and attacks itself, but it's also inflammatory. So before I went and saw the dermatologist, I was like, I'm gonna cut out dairy and I'm gonna cut out gluten and I'm gonna see if that helps me. Um, it has helped me, but it, it was not the major fix of the situation. So I go to my dermatologist basically, and my dermatologist, and this was like a year later, okay? I just saw the dermatologist like three weeks ago. And the dermatologist was like, oh my God. So basically my eczema was like, I don't know, mutating? It was so bad and it would have only gotten worse had I not stepped up and said I need to go see a dermatologist. We're talking, like when you see me on camera, I know you're like, well, I don't see, 
I have a lot of lights. I have a lot of all of that, okay? So it's very rare that you're gonna, I'm gonna let you see that part of me. And maybe I should be more open with you guys and let you kind of see, but that's just, it's my, my insecurities to fight with, if that makes sense. A lot of people have like, you know, let them see it so they can relate to it. And I love that. I love that idea and I love that concept, but actually being able to be open, it's easier to say that to someone who has, a serious skin issue than it is to actually do it for the person who has the skin issue if that makes sense if you guys struggle with like acne or anything like that that you know it's easier to be like open and relatable about it to say it than it is to actually do it so my neck has almost completely cleared up if you see I have a lot of scarring here just from the scratching like I have a real big one here the scratching and the itching there were nights where like I have to wrap my neck because my skin could not touch skin and it was so bad and so painful. There was clothing I couldn't wear. I would always wear shirts like this and now I'm like, I'm so used to wearing shirts like this. Um, it's just what I'm comfortable with now, but I would never wear anything that showed my neck. And so the other day when I posted that video of the Lunar Beauty situation and I was in a low cut like sweater, um, it was so exciting and I am getting a little teary eyed because when you fight with something, that you can't there's nothing you can do when your body is attacking itself okay um so i just felt like i was in a lose-lose situation i was already having issues mentally and then my body was just giving up on me and it was like you know i try to be as healthy as possible i try to do the right things i try to take care of my skin and it just um i just felt like i was failing I was failing and my body was failing. So when you, when people fight with those, and I know it doesn't seem like we do, oh, it's eczema, and, and people are like, it's just dry skin. Look that shit up online, okay? Because when I looked it up, go on TikTok specifically, I felt so much better knowing that I was not alone because I thought I was a freak. Because when you think of eczema, you think of, oh, I just have a little dry skin. It's... <laughs> beyond that when it gets beyond that point it is like so severe and such an illness that no one really can see unless you allow them to and that just wasn't something i was open enough to do with you guys so um i do apologize if that upsets anybody that i'm not that open about it but it was just something i was fighting with mentally you know i didn't feel beautiful I didn't feel like I should be able to wear the things I wanted to and I didn't want people to look at me and be like, oh, what is that, you know, is it contagious? It just, With that being said, I went on an anti-inflammatory diet. I am currently on an anti-inflammatory diet and it is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. I am not a diet person, by the way. I don't do that. Yes, I'm a heavy set girl. We can see that. And I'm okay with that. However, when it comes to my health and taking care of myself in that aspect, I, I am, I find that to be very important. I'm not saying that your weight isn't important. I'm just not going to go on some crazy binging diet and hurt myself in order to be skinny for what the world deems fit. I'm just not. So I have cut out dairy. I have cut out gluten. I am working out cutting out like refined sugars and it's just hard. So on top of everything else, and I also am working on quitting smoking, which by the way, if you don't know, I am a smoker, which causes inflammation as well. I know I do not need you to tell me all the health effects. I do not need you to tell me I need to quit smoke. I'm aware. I appreciate it. I'm aware. I'm working on it. It's an addiction. I have to work on it. I think that eating healthy is, is, is amazing. It's beautiful. It is so good but just transitioning to things that you always thought were okay to have like dairy to find out that they actually are not okay to have it's like 31 years or 30 years i've been told i can eat this and it's healthy for me and i get vitamin d from it and da, 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 da. and now you're telling me it's horrible and it causes bloating and gut issues and immune issues and inflammatory and i'm just like <laughs> Ah, you know what I mean if you guys have ever gone through something like this you need to comment down below and tell me I'm not alone because when my dermatologist was telling me all this I'm just like what so she gave me a beta methazone cream for my neck and then she wanted me to try keto conazole cream I listen I don't know okay two different creams one for my face one for my neck and behind my ears and when I tell you I tell you in a week like this it listen three weeks ago I would have never let you see my neck do you see this I had it in between my boobs okay it was 
everywhere. Everything I've been doing has been really good, so I've just kind of avoided applying a lot of makeup. So only doing one makeup video a week causes me to wash my face less and severely less. So I wash my face with like warm water, but I don't have to use double cleansing, all this other stuff to kind of get all that yuck off. So that's why I've only been doing makeup a application makeup video once a week. Just so you guys know, I am still doing makeup and beauty videos. I'm just kind of doing this for a little while to help my skin calm down and get healthy because ultimately that's the important part. So I had to pump the brakes on makeup because I just need to make sure my skin is the healthiest it can be when I'm applying makeup. There are a lot of things that I have to start changing. I have to wash my brushes more frequently. Don't judge me, I know. So that is just one of the issues. Um, and it doesn't, like I said, to people who don't really know how severe eczema is or how severe it can get will probably look at this video and be like, are you freaking kidding me? You're crying over dry skin. But it quite literally altered a lot of my life and what like my normal day to day. Like I only wore the same five shirts because I didn't want people to see my neck and I was uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep. There were nights where I was taking Benadryl to help sleep because I could not sleep. I was in severe pain and agony and just torment so please just be more understanding and if you don't know or you're not educated on the topic you can always go and google it it takes zero amounts of money to educate yourself on certain things before commenting shitty stuff like it's just dry skin and even as a person who has had eczema forever i thought oh it's just dry skin no big deal um to have it flare the way that it did was probably one of the scariest things that happened to me because i had no idea what was happening to my skin um and i'm just glad just glad that I got it fixed. Like my skin looks so good. This used to be so red. So I wanted to pop in here towards the end and just kind of show you how my skin is. So right here is kind of the little piece of it that's left for my eczema, but like it's so, look at my eyes. These used to be so cracked. You can see it just a little bit, but they used to be so cracked and so painful right in here when I would put eyeshadow on. And then over here, just like most of the redness is gone. I still have a little redness here. And then right here, like I said, and down right there. But for the most part, like my skin has healed. It is a journey. We're gonna get there. So if you're having the same issues, like I said, just make sure you reach out and you get help because you deserve the help. So the second issue I have, um, I found out this one's a little bit more like sensitive to talk about. So like hold your judgment, okay? So 2019, I was pregnant with Emma and I had gotten like a cyst situation on my thigh and I thought no big deal. I mean, it got pretty bad, but I thought no big deal. I'm just chunky, I'm sweaty, it's, you know, I'm pregnant, it's fine. And I handled it and I moved on. However, three months later, I had the same situation in a different spot. A couple months after that, my underarm, I ended up having to go to the hospital because the cyst had ruptured. Like it started to progress progressively get worse. And so the past year, it's been worse. So I would say like mid 2020 to now, well, a couple weeks ago now, it was like really bad. And I was just like, there has to be more than me just, you know, getting cysts or these infections or something, you know what I mean? Like I'm taking care of myself. I don't know what else I can do. So I started doing some research on my own and sometimes that can be dangerous, okay? Because it, the internet will either tell you you're dying or it's just nothing. And so I found out where I found this disease and I'm gonna try to not butcher it. Hydronitis superativa, maybe. I don't know, we're gonna call it HS. That's what we're gonna call it. I'll put it here so you can see the spelling. Um, it's actually more common than people think because it's it says it's a rare disease, like when you look it up, but it's just underreported because people don't realize that they have it. They think like me, like it's, oh, it's just a, you know, it's just a cyst, it's just an infected pimple, no big deal, ingrown hair, whatever. No, no. If they're reoccurring, meaning you have them more than one to two times a year, you need to see your dermatologist and talk to them because it can be severe. And there are stages to this. I am lucky enough that I am at stage one. It's not crazy, crazy bad, but I joined a Facebook group about it and some of those women and men, like my heart goes out to them because I know how severely bad these hurt. When I tell you when it's bad on my underarm, I can't move my arm. I cannot physically move my arm because it feels like someone is just stabbing me 
in my underarm like and I get them in my groin it's extremely painful and some of these people get them on their face their chest their butt and I'm just like I, I pray for them 100% because I know from just being a few that I have seeing how severe it can get obviously I had my nice little mental breakdown because I just again was another thing my body was attacking me with and, it's and like, then I find out there's no cure there is no cure for HS it is they say a more newer condition but it's not newer it's just now being reported so then obviously I went to TikTok and Facebook and I started searching and I was like I can't be the only one and come to find out I'm not there are a lot of people across the world who suffer from this illness and this inflammatory disease and there are plenty of ways that you can help maintain it or keep it from flaring or kind of soothe it if it does flare but there is no cure it is a genetic issue is a genetic issue so if you have it someone else down the line might have it or someone else before you might have had it this was one of the major things that i kind of freaked out about because there are other issues that can intertwine with hs um ibs um pcos i think is what it is there's a lot of different diseases that can kind of intertwine with this disease so i have to get like a bunch of tests done and stuff and hopefully i don't have any of those things I just have the HS portion of it which is still I mean it's still a battle like there are times where I can't wear jeans because I'll be having a flare-up and it will hurt so bad and I'm so uncomfortable and all I want to do is sit in the bath and soak because I'm in so much pain but I was given a medication from a dermatologist which she said obviously there's no cure but I'm supposed to take this for three months and it's supposed to help it. So what she thinks is that the reason it's a hormonal issue, genetic hormonal issue that I am overproducing testosterone. And so this is spirolactin, spironolactin, okay, 100 milligrams. Basically, they use it for cystic acne, blood pressure. There's like a lot of things that that medicine can be used for. Um, I have to take it at nighttime because unfortunately it lowers blood pressure I already have extremely low blood pressure so it can make me dizzy and lightheaded and whatnot so it took me a while to actually start taking the medicine because it just frightened me I'm not a medicine person and then seeing kind of like the side effects of it I was just like I really I don't know like I don't want to go to sleep one night and not wake up because my blood pressure was so low that I passed out and my heart stopped or I don't know I just go my mind goes there so I did start taking them because I just I have to get it under control because it is severely painful and if I can kind of control it I know that I can't get rid of it but if I can control it then at least I won't be in so much pain I've seen a lot of people say that they had success on it I've seen a lot of people say that it was horrible that it didn't help their flare-ups it caused them to be nauseous and vomit all the time i've not had any issues with that and i've been on it for about two weeks i will tell you <laughs> it has cleared my skin and now i'm not like an acne prone person but guys when i tell you like my skin looks so much like look at that glowy glowy i have super dry skin thank you eczema and my skin has been the prettiest most healthy looking skin it's been because of those pills so I have seen a lot of positive things that it helps with hair um, hair loss so a lot of the times like when I shower when I brush my hair I will lose like clumps of hair we're not talking like oh, a few pieces fell out of my Cl I'm surprised I'm not bald like if I didn't have super thick hair I would be bald at this point so it's supposed to help with that with lowering the test lowering the testosterone like it helps with a lot of different hormonal issues so I just a lot has kind of fell in my lap okay when it comes to medical issues because up until about a year ago I really haven't had any of those except for like mental health and you know I do what I can but when it comes with like my physical health I've just never really had any issues so to have all of this dumped into my lap and it all be related to like skin internal immune inflammatory like combining I'm just like where did I go wrong like what did I do for my body just to be like you know what we're done with you so I just I wanted to update you guys and kind of let you know what's happening with my life because you know you guys are my friends and I like to just keep you updated so you don't just go you know why did you stop making videos um I, I love making makeup videos 
I love applying makeup. I miss doing that. When I did the Lunar Beauty video the other day, I was so happy because I was able to finally do makeup and I haven't been able to do that in a very long time. So I hope this kind of like explains to you guys like where I've been with makeup, why. I hope I'm not going to get like a lot of judgment on my issues because I really just don't need that kind of negativity in my life. It will just be deleted. If you don't really know a lot about HS or eczema and all that stuff, you can educate yourself and we can have a conversation, but I really just don't want anyone coming to me and telling me how this is wrong, that is wrong, I shouldn't be doing that. We're not gonna do that. If you wanna be supportive, I would really appreciate that because that's the kind of stuff that I need right now. I'm fighting a bunch of illnesses that most people just think are not that big of a deal, but they have been completely life altering to me. So I just need, I just need some help um, emotionally when it comes to that. Just give me those kind of vibes down in the comments. But I hope that this kind of helped you guys, you know, get to know me a little bit and what's going on. And now I'm on four different medications. I'm also on a shampoo. I actually forgot to say that. I have it right here. Cyclopyrox shampoo for my scalp, which has really helped because that was another issue I had. Was the eczema had gone up to my scalp. Um, and that was a big deal. It was like, when I tell you... Like, if your body has not ever been itchy from head to toe, you're never gonna understand what I'm saying. <laughs> because the, it was so bad, okay? It was so bad. But we are on the journey to a healthy, healthier place. I am done with gluten. I'm done with dairy. I am working on getting rid of sugars. Calm down. That takes time. I am working on quitting smoking because that is a major, major issue of mine that I do want to do. I want to stop. Like, that's my thing is I do... It's just hard. It's a hard thing to do. So it's gonna happen. It just takes a little while. Um, so just be supportive of me, guys. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. If you did get this far, make sure you comment down below and let me know, have you ever had like this kind of issue? Have you dealt with eczema? Have you dealt with HS? Are you dealing with a different disease that most people just kind of like play off and don't really pay any mind to, but you struggle with? You can always comment down below. You can always DM me on my Instagram or my Facebook and talk to me. I am here for you guys but I really appreciate it if you did make it this far I appreciate you listening I appreciate you being here for me I appreciate everything you guys have done for me and as always make sure you give this video a thumbs up before you leave and I will see you guys on the next one bye